Welcome to the Live, Live with, with Aaron, Aaron and, and Kelly, Kelly Show. How's everything going, Aaron? How was your week? My week was probably as busy as your week, right? Oh, my God. We had a busy week. Welcome to all that are listening and watching. Uh, you can watch us on our Ustream channel, uh, just Ustream.tv forward slash channel forward slash KCAA TV. And you'll also see us in Mikasa Broadcasting in Texas. That's right. We're very excited to announce that. We'll be premiering this Thursday to Day, actually, mm -hmm. yeah, um, and we've got three time slots: uh, one in the morning, seven thirty, seven thirty, twelve thirty, and five thirty. I know. So wow, we're three very times. excited. Now, Arid. Yes. We have something we're going to be giving away in the next month or so. So we want to let the people know that we are going to be giving away a solar-powered Kindle case. That's so right. So all of you guys out there that want that, We're make sure you you hit us up on Facebook, Twitter. Ooh. Let us know um, if you have any questions about it. Hit us up again on Facebook and Twitter, Kelly V. Dolan and Aaron M. Sanchez. And we'll talk about that later on in the show. We'll talk about how this works, and, and, and I'm telling you, you're going to want it. Even if you don't have a Kindle, you're going to want it for a gift. Because uh, it's a great time to give gifts right now, right? That's right. Now, Aaron, a couple weeks ago, we were at the MTV Movie Awards. Yes. We had such a great time. And I got an awesome interview from Jean-Claude Van Damme. It was so much fun. He was walking the red carpet. He wasn't doing interviews with anyone. And we just kind of called out his name. And he gave us a great interview with his daughter. That's yeah, can you show your dress to NBC? Yes. Oh, she's so cute. No, because she bought it yesterday. Oh. You should model. Are you a model? No, no. Should be. She How do you feel about that? <laughs> no, no, no. She just finished a, a, a project called UFO opening uh, in theaters. I don't know when. In a couple of months. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. That's cool. What was it like working with all the action greats? Uh, you talk about expandable. Yes, sir. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Because I saw those guys years ago. Of course. And uh, I was uh, less mature, and you know I met Chuck when I was training with him. I was uh, climbing the wall of Stallone to try to get in Connecticut. The cops came in, <laughs> slack him in the fucking doing right. Is it? Yeah. So Arnold, I met him years ago too. So I was that uh, guy, and then suddenly I became the villain. So it's a great feeling. And uh, you like so playing the villain? Yeah, because it was a great job, and the script is smart. And all the expendable gave 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 their passion from the past. What were you? What would you say is your favorite movie in the last year? Oh, I think one that you were in. Uh, uh, I, I, uh, the movie uh, The Iron Lady was amazing. This woman is a goddess of acting. Okay, if people want to get into acting, we've got a lot of young viewers out there. What's some advice you can give to them? Today, I will think better than yesterday. Today, if you believe in a movie, you have to first create a past history of your character. Because I heard from Gino, my makeup, and from De Niro, that no matter when you come on the camera for the first time, even if it's shot on day 26, you've got to create the first impression. So if I'm a killer, for example, or a nice guy, I've got to build a memory of my life, my mother, my father, and I open my eyes and I'm like, okay, I'm a bad guy, I'm like this, you know, a bad guy. You can Funny. do both. No, but you have to, to rehearse that and then you become like that. That's the best way to become a great actor, to create a life inside you and then come back to your life. So, I mean, that was a pretty cool interview, getting yeah. Jean-Claude right there. They were pulling him. They I saw were, that. They were. And for those of you who are listening, um, make sure you guys actually go to our YouTube channel so that you can see the interview. He didn't want to leave. He kept wanting to talk yeah. to us. I felt like we were just going to hang out on the red carpet all day long. <laughs> um, but they were pulling him. But so, so thank you, um, Jean-Claude Van Damme, for giving us that interview. Um, we had an exciting weekend, Aaron. We were at the Produced By Conference this past weekend at Sony Pictures. Your studios and we got to talk to some amazing people kind of at the forefront of of the platforms with online you know if you're if you're thinking about putting a project online these guys are the ones that will get it get it going yeah absolutely I mean they were talking about new media mm -hmm. again it was the produced by conference thrown by the Producers Guild of America mm -hmm. and uh, they brought in Christopher Nolan Emma Thomas uh, uh, from from Dark Knight Rises mm -hmm. which which we have some cool news here yes. as well Dark Knight Rises <laughs> uh, uh, we'll be getting into that later we'll on we'll be getting into that but, but, but it was interesting because Christopher Nolan was talking about film and he started about 12-14 years ago he had done it before but he, he had a small project $6,000 he got to pay for the film 
and probably not the crew. They all they all pitched it, and they did, would do it on weekends. And and he and look at him now. So it just goes to show if which you have is, a passion project, yeah, which is inspiring for all you filmmakers tuning in. I know we've got a lot of filmmakers that are tuning into this episode because we were tweeting and Facebooking all week, and and these are people that are, have a name. Everybody knows them, but at one point, you know, they were starting with what you said, six thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, which, and, and that know, was difficult to get. And, and back then, they didn't have the five D and the seven D cameras or anything no. like that. You and, know? So and, it was, and, that was a lot. It is interesting. He he likes film, not yeah. digital. But digital is taking on uh, the world, and that's what we were. Got, we had a chance to talk to some people, right? Yeah, definitely. But let's check out a quick interview with Roy Price. We have Roy Price from Am Amazon, mm -hmm. and we I spoke with him, and this was an interesting panel. It was Roy Price, Robert Kinsel, and Alan De Debova, and uh, these guys were talking about how to get your project online and actually um, turn it into a web series. Uh, and then eventually, if there was an audience, you could also segue that into actual television. So check this interview out. Do we have yeah, it? They, so Amazon, Amazon, this is Roy Price talking that you spoke to. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. What all the viewers want to know is if they want to upload content to Amazon.com, uh, what is the process of that? You can upload a script for a movie or for a TV show at AmazonStudios.com. And in the upper right uh, part of the page, there's a big blue button that says Upload. Hit that and upload your script. Okay, fantastic. And Roy, what was your favorite movie in the last year? We just covered MTV Movie Awards, so it was all about that last weekend. Just want to find out what your favorite movie was this past year. I don't want to play favorites, but I think a lot of people had capes, and there was a huge battle in New York, and I would have to say it was probably the Avengers. So far. So okay. far. And, and who was your favorite character in the Avengers? Uh, well, they were all good, and I think my favorite one was uh, probably myself at home making the home movie version <laughs> with the Captain America outfit. So oh. that has not been released and I'm trying to work But if you do release it, there. you will let us know that, yeah. right? I certainly, I mean, it'll be huge. So Maybe we'll see know, it in, the, in the sequel of it, the next yeah, Avengers. Exactly. <laughs> now that was really cool because uh, what I didn't know this, that if you have a script, uh, you have it all written out and you have had a hard time pitching it, Amazon is buying scripts. Uh, you'll see all the details on their site and, and or they're taking some uh, the stuff and you just upload it. All the legal stuff is there so they don't rip it away from you yeah, entirely. Yeah, like it's, it. it seems like it's a pretty no-brainer process with Amazon. We... <clears throat> We did speak to some Excuse other you. people. <laughs> yes, thank you. We did speak with some other people, though, that it might be a little bit harder to submit your projects where they want an agent or uh, a producer to yes. actually submit the project. But Amazon, with them, it's a pretty much an open call as far as submitting your project. So I thought that was pretty cool. And again, Amazon is working very big. They've got a lot of digital content. I've watched movies on Amazon mm -hmm. and YouTube and Google, or well, we know Google is YouTube. YouTube mm -hmm. is Google. Uh, we got to, you got to speak to them yes. about. Uh, content, right? Yes, we spoke with Robert Kinsel, and he was really fun as well. Like the again, they were pulling these guys in all different directions. So we appreciate yeah, they, the interview. They give you like like less than a minute. Yeah. So do we have that interview up? All right, great. Check this out. Robert, you talked a lot about um, the importance of having hours of viewership as well as subscribers. What's yes. some advice that you can give to other people out there on getting their hours up as well as subscribers? It's everything comes down to passion and finding the audience of passion and really targeting them well with, with the content that you're creating. Mm -hmm. So the broader you are on the internet, the less likely you will get a lot of viewership hours. It's very difficult to aggregate a lot of people across many different types of programming into one channel and, and, and a certain consumption pattern. If you target something really well, let's say yoga, mm -hmm. there are 35 million uh, yoga enthusiasts in the world there is no TV channel for them anywhere. So if you develop one and you truly focus and stay true to that programming voice, you will probably get most of them watching at some period of time. And, uh, and, and you'll develop a big business. You'll get a lot of subscribers and a lot of viewership hours. So you heard it here first. All you yoga people out there, there's no channel. So that might be something we might have to start up and then contact you about.
Now, there's a couple of really good things that he said there, and I want to bring that out. One was what he just said, make it very specific, because what YouTube has the ability to, to do is with all of their analytics and Google, they know what kind of person they're targeting. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and the two things that he spoke about when they were doing the panel was getting the hours up as far as people tuning in and subscribers. So a lot of times people think, oh, well, the views, the views, everybody looks at the views, but that's not really what they're looking at. They're looking at how often do people go to this channel, how many people go to this channel, and how many people are going to sit there and watch something. Because if they're going to do that, then they can develop that into a, a, a web series, or they can develop that into a television show, which they're looking to do. Exactly. I want to bring that out. They are looking for programming. In fact, he mentioned that... Yoga. It, well, <laughs> mentioned, he mentioned yoga, but he also mentioned that the, he had approached one uh, a film or some person that was doing a channel yeah. and said, well, would you like to take this to the next level? And they're like, no, we're fine. Yeah. <laughs> but but YouTube has money to, to push it to that next stage. Of course, of course. And we got to speak with one other person, well, a couple other people. We got another interview mm -hmm. uh, this past weekend. It was with Alan Debova, and he is with Mich Debova. That Debo sounds very... Debova. I don't know. I'm trying to say it. <laughs> I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm totally chopping it up, but um, he was so nice. Um, he's with Machinima, so this might be for all my Comic-Con guys out there. Machinima does a ton of stuff in the gaming world. Yes. Um, Trailers. Do we have that interview? And they have, wait, and we have yeah. some really good information right here. If you don't pay attention to this, you're going to miss out. Something about Halo. Ooh, Aaron set that up. Tune in. Watch. And the name, where did that come from? Can you explain the history of that? Well, Machinima comes from machine cinema, and uh, it's really about content that's generated from uh, game engines in real time. And, uh, and that was really the origins of the company. Uh, one a good example of that is the South Park folks did an episode called uh, Make Love Not Warcraft that won an Emmy in 2007. And that's, that, that's a good example of Machinima. Now, I, I heard you guys speak, but I want to fill in all our viewers as well. Um, you, you spoke about your demographic as far as the people tuning into a lot of the things that you have going on. And you said it's around 18 to 34 males, but you're also involved in like the whole Comic-Con world as well because of your content. Um, you let me know that there's something you guys are going to be working on, the Halo project. Project, or it's no secret, but can you go into explaining that a little bit? Well, we uh, in the last year we've done a bunch of episodic series, including Mortal Kombat and Receiver, which won Best Drama, and other shows like that. And this in uh, October will be a live action series based on the game Halo that will launch, and it will be the biggest, we think the most ambitious uh, web series ever created. And and it will the trailer will launch at Comic-Con, and, and Sanjay, here's the one who did the deal. Nice! <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about that, and, and tell me about how long you guys have known each other, how you guys met. Uh, well, we've uh, we met through mutual friends a long time ago, and uh, I've worked at the company for about three years. The company's only about four years old, and we've just seen phenomenal growth in very short order in the last, uh, I'd say, a couple of years. We've grown to be probably the largest content partner on YouTube, uh, save for Vivo, uh, and we do about uh, 1.6 billion video views every month to about 160 million global uniques around the world. Do you still get surprised and shocked by the numbers, oh the growth in the numbers? It's, so, it's crazy. It's almost a joke, right? <laughs> How big it is. But, it's, uh, but we love it. We take it. We take it. And, and he's right. I mean, it's crazy over the amount of views. And that could be several people logging on over and over again. But it's all about that, that, that viewership. In fact, they've been approached by other movies to promote movies that are similar in that vein. Yeah, I, I definitely want to talk to all the filmmakers listening right now because I spoke with him mm -hmm. uh, from Machinima, Alan. And he definitely said that they're opening... Um, Oh, kind of opening up like uh, co-development yeah the streams of 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 you know kind of co-development as you said Aaron with other people that are creating projects so if you do have a short that's out there but know your market their market is about 18 to 36 male orientated and it's like your Comic Con people, you know your Halo people, but that mm -hmm. kind of your, your Aaron M. Sanchez people. Yes. Um, I'm I'm starting to get there. I'm starting to get there. I went and saw uh, Snow White and the Huntsman. Did I you liked Avengers. Was. I did. I that would be Avengers. see. That's like a, that's right in the same yes. vein. Yeah. So. I, 
again, know when you go to pitch something, know what they're looking for. You know what I mean? So if you do have an idea out there, definitely hit them over up over at Machinima. And for our business side of people, people are saying, well, I'm not a filmmaker, but what a great way to advertise. Think of what your product is. And if it's in that vein, well, then you go and advertise with them. You two brought out something very interesting that, again, they have the viewing, being able to view and then go to the, the movie. It's it's really awesome. That, But go check out some of our interviews. We have them fully on there. Go to Kelly V. Dolan, either Twitter or Facebook, or Aaron M. Sanchez, and you'll always be the first to see it. That's right. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break, but before we go, you are going to not want to miss out on this. Mossy Furlan is in the house from The Dark Knight Rises. Woo! Oh, my God. And I, I see, can't wait. I see online we have some Dark Knight fans already. So make sure you guys find us on the Ustream channel. And if you guys have any questions, hit us up on Ustream. That's right. Stay right there. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. K C A A. -A. Welcome back to Live with Aaron and Kelly. That's right. We are here in the studio of San Bernardino, and we have a very special guest with us. And if you want to call in, call in to 888-909-1050. We have From the Dark Knight Rises and so many other movies, Masi Furlan. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. First of all, let me just give you one card. And then I brought this candy. Oh, Italy. My yeah. mom sent it to me. Oh, really? Me. Oh. She keeps telling me that she spent 14 euro to send this. For, oh that's a lot God. of euro. I know. I you, that's a it. lot of euro. I thank you. It. It's so cute. Oh, well, thank you. What's her oh name? What's your mother's name? Uh, Giancarla. Giancarla? Oh. Yes. Oh. I love She's the accent. I love the accent. Yeah, for those that don't know, as or if you probably can tell, what, what, where's, what's your heritage? Well, I'm Italian. I'm from uh, Venice, Italy. I mean, actually, Treviso is a, a near town. It's a town near Venice, about 10 miles from Venice, but nobody knows Treviso, so what the hell, just say. But how nice to be able to go back and forth from here to Italy. I mean... Yeah, I go back and forth every couple of years. I go visit my family, but uh -huh. yeah, I, I like to go back, but I like to live here. <laughs> <laughs> now, and, and your mom, I think she's tuning in as well, right? She, she, could, she your mom can tune in right now, and anybody yeah, can is. tune in to ustream.tv forward slash channel forward slash KCAA TV. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much. Thank you so very for much. Candy. Thank you. <laughs> so sweet. I can't have it right now. Well, maybe I can while you talk. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, but, I have no problem talking, ladies. I finally got a man on the live with Aaron and Kelly show for a weeks, single man we, for weeks we we got lady uh, actresses and stuff like that <laughs> my girlfriend's watching too. oh not single so man <laughs> oh, we were always having the home. ladies and i promised you i would get an actor i would get a, a male actor i got brian t that's last true, week that's true that's true okay but um so tell us what's going on you've got a lot of projects going on you've been working like crazy well, I'm blessed that I'm working. Uh -huh. Yes, I just wrapped the movie when uh, Lauren Holly and uh, Kaylee um, DeFair, which is a girl, she works, she's a serious background gossip girl. Uh -huh. And um, I just wrapped two days ago this uh, movie for Lifetime. It's called Layover, where I play uh, Russian. Guy. <laughs> yeah, and who's, who's in that, actually? Who, who, the, uh, there's an interesting person in, in that movie, in the Lifetime, right? Is that who plays No, no, that? this is the one uh, with Lauren Holly. Then I'm oh, that's the one with Lauren Holly. Next you week I'm doing another movie for, for uh, Lifetime with Lindsay Lohan. Oh, you've been on Lohan, uh, okay, not Lohan, but uh, Lifetime. Lohan, Lohan TV? <laughs> I don't know, were you? <laughs> well, hopefully <laughs> Lifetime will send me a panettone for Christmas. I'm doing two movies for them in two weeks. So. I know, wow. And then you'll get us more candy. Of course. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, but, you know, Dark Knight Rises now, what we want to tell everybody, you can't say too much about The Dark Knight Rises because it hasn't come out yet. You have a, a certain clause that you had to sign, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you could talk about, like, you know, when you first got it. I mean, what was that like? Did you have to audition? Did they just call yes, you? Yes, well, of course. I have yeah. to audition. And, you know, interesting was that I auditioned in May and they cast me in August. So, like, two and a half months after my audition, it was completely out of the blue. And, you know, it was a very nice surprise, obviously. And, uh, Another interesting thing about the, the movie is that I, when I was working on the movie, I had a broken finger. 
So I didn't. Why? Want, Why? What happened? Uh, because I tried to. Because I tried to play basketball, and I'm not good at it. <laughs> you tried to. Well, what, what position did soccer. you play? Yeah. He, he, he used I don't to play even know which positions are in basketball. <laughs> I just. I don't like when I go to the gym. I don't like to do the machines because I find them boring. So what I do, you know, I play basketball to do some cardio. But I'm not good at it, and I keep going. I'm breaking my fingers, my elbows. Ugh. <laughs> That's so, so yeah, so I had a broken finger when I was working on set on Dark Knight, but obviously I didn't tell anybody. Well, that was smart. I mean, you kept it up. Did, did you get to see any of the vehicles? Any of what? Any of the vehicles? Uh, actually, no, I haven't. I didn't see any of the vehicles. I see. I'm, I'm still trying to get a little something out of you. I see, but he, he is, still is Bruce very quiet? Is Bruce Wayne I, Batman? I, Can you I tell met, us that? I met an Atway <laughs> dog, though. Oh, really? Her dog. What kind of dog does she have? A uh, golden retriever. Wow. wow, I wouldn't see her with a golden retriever. I like in my. But she, she, well, you you would just like to see her in your vision, anyways. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah. She's a cat person. Well, that's what I wanted well, to see. Uh, I wanted clearly, to see if she, she had any cats. Well, she, clearly, she's about to really have to study the cats because she's about to be Catwoman. About to be, yeah, absolutely. And that comes out. I mean, I can't. I'm gonna line up. Going to be. Yeah, we're we're gonna line up for it. But uh, you, you know, Christopher Nolan. What what was he like? Is he a very passionate man or? Very passionate man. Very very nice guy and um, I will say very calm he knows exactly what he wants and I you know in, in the days that I work I never see him like you know nervous and freaked out or anything you know sometimes what there's you know some things that is not working and people get nervous absolutely totally calm and cool the whole time very nice guy and he, he said my name perfect Massey when a lot of you know a lot of people they say, how do they say yeah oh they say Marcy Messi which I can be sometimes <laughs> Mercy Messiah so uh -huh. they, I have a lot a lot you know, Messiah uh, no yeah. <laughs> but your, your full he name Massey immediately but your full name is Massimiliano right I almost messed it up <laughs> yes, okay it's Massimiliano I love oh, that. Which is sort awesome. of Maximilian, right. if you will. Right, right, right. Why, why just Masi? Why did you shorten it? To make things easier for, 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 for Americans. For, 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 for you us. guys. Oh, you know, because I figure if I go, American. you know, if, <laughs> if the director is thinking about who to cast in a movie, by the time he learned to say Massimiliano, he's going to pick Max on Tony, which is an easier <laughs> name. <laughs> so I said, let's go with the short one. No, don't frustrate the casting directors or the directors. Yeah, because say, so okay, we want to keep. Ma, 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 yeah. Oh, you know what? Forget yeah. it. Forget it. So I said, let's not take the chance to lose parts. Sure, why not? Yeah. yeah. So Maximilian Shell, he never uh, abbreviated his name. Who? Max Maximilian Shell. Yeah, but Maximilian is right. like American. Massimiliano is more. Uh, it, yeah. It's a little bit harder, I, I would say. I would say. I would but, say. But, Massimiliano. But I like it still. Massi. Massi. Wait, say it one more time. <laughs> Massimiliano. Massimiliano. And you can blame my mom. She's online watching no, it's for a the name. name. She's the one that it's you picked the name. It's a beautiful name. You know, you have an interesting story because you, you had, I mean, if I could talk about it, you had a smoking habit. Yes, please talk yes. about this. You oh, had a smoking smoke habit. There. I, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> no, I know you're watching. You know? Well, he, he, he loves this story. I do so, because yeah. I, I was hoping you'd stop, you'd stop personally. I remember you talking about it. And, and, and what happened? What was the turning point for you? Okay, so I... I I smoked for about, well, I shouldn't say many years because then people do with the calculation <laughs> and find out how old I am. Right, right. So I smoked for a long time, and my mom, one day, she called me. She said, listen, your best friend quit smoking by reading this book. And so I'm going to send you the book. And I told my mom, don't, don't waste time. I'm not going to read the book. I'm not interested. At least you're in honest. Yeah. So then she, she sent the book anyway. So I get the box. Inside the book, so there is a letter. And I read the letter. It goes like, my dear son. We already like. Oh, oh God! Okay. <laughs> Here it comes. Here we go. Here it comes. <laughs> Three good reasons. And she was doing the voice like yeah, this. Yeah. Three good reasons to quit smoking. One, your health. Two, the health of your dog. And then she put three your wallet and she put like five dollars by 365 days a year equal three thousand whatever two hundred fifty two dollars equal. 
a nice vacation in Italy to visit your mother. Oh, she did it. And I she did it. I Guilt choked. Over. And I said, okay, Guilt I trip. need to read that book now. Guilt trip. How do you not read that when your mom sends at you? It's your mother. It's your mom. Wow. Well, oh, you've just given every mother in, in watching an this an idea. Oh, everybody's going to send you. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. It's a great, the three lists. I mean, the three, and, and, and you read the book. What's the name of the book? I'm curious. And the name of the book is, uh, is uh, it's easy to quit smoking. And the last name of the author is Carr, C-A-R-R, Alan Carr. Yeah. Okay, all okay, right. Okay, so all those smokers out there, pick that up. You know who I'm talking and about. And how long did it take for you to end, end that? Well, I, I read the book in about, I would say, two weeks because I'm not a good reader. So but I mean, was, and, and, and then after that, were you able to like wean off, or did you no, go no. cold turkey? Yeah, I, 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 I finished the book. Yeah. I light my last cigarette and never smoke again. Congratulations, wow. Masi. I gotta applaud you on that. You just extended your life at least ten years. I know. And the wrinkles are getting better. Now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's but you know, so many people in Europe smoke. It's a cultural thing. So many. Yeah, because probably they can't afford to buy that book. <laughs> <laughs> So go check out that book, and then you may be able to stop smoking with the help of Masi and his mother. You can say, thank you, Masi. Yeah. In fact, in fact if you guys want to tweet with us, go ahead and tweet. Uh, they can find Masi at Masi underscore uh, B-R-O-S, right? B-O-S, like Boston. Oh, yes, boss. Okay. Masi boss. Okay, He's got it. He's the boss. <laughs> no, boss with one S, like Boston. Oh, okay. B like boss. I know. Like yeah. Boss. Bo boss. Oh, wait, can like you boss. say it one more time? Uh, boss. Boss. B-O-S. I, I, you should be doing voiceovers. You should be doing more voiceovers. I know. <laughs> Tell my agent. He's going to do our intro. He's going to do it. And do that now, live with Aaron and Kelly. And now, live with Aaron Kelly. I can do well. I want to tune in. I was that practicing show. to do. No, that was good. I was practicing to do. No, I can't do. It. I was practicing to do Morgan Freeman voice, but the problem is that it's confusing because when I do his voice, when I try to do his voice, my accent doesn't match. Mm -hmm. So people say, oh, "No, it's not that good." No, no, no. But um, you got to work on the accent. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I work on that. Well, you know what? It's actually time to go to a commercial. Um, Masi, can you take us to commercial in your nice, deep voice? Can you just say, we'll be back after commercial? With a Russian accent? Sure. We will be back after commercial. Da. Live with Aaron and Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Stay oh, tuned yeah. right here. <laughs> I missed that part. <laughs>